I showed off the game that I made while I was sleeping, and talked about how, when asked, the majority of people said that adding enemies to the game was the best way to add variety. So that's what I did. Firstly though, I finished up the bees, and now it looks like this. I gave them this really satisfying little squash and stretch when they come out. But one good looking enemy is not going to cut it. So I went off and made the slime, because every game needs a slime enemy. I just did the same thing as the bee, I made a very basic blob with Kenny's creature mixer. And then I shrunk it down to be slime size and tweaked it a little bit with some squash and stretch in the animation to make it look like it's jumping. And then I put it in scene and made it move only while it was doing the jump animation. And then I shared this on Twitter and our Discord, and everybody was saying that it was too cute to kill, which made me wonder if I should just give it like angry eyebrows or something. But I figured that would have the opposite effect. And then if you have one slime, you need another because otherwise it'll be lonely. So I stretched it out and made a big slime, which was a little bit awkward and it kind of came out like a big square, almost, with like round edges. And then I copied over the code from the bee, so when you kill the slime enemy, it spawns a bunch of little slimes. And I made it so that the big slime drops a health point, and each of the smaller slimes drop a point point. So killing each one feels a little different. And while I wanted these to be close range enemies, I kind of got used to how their attacks work. So when they slam on the ground, they spawn bullets in separate directions, and then the next time they jump it rotates in the same pattern but in a different direction. I was kind of hoping that this would make fighting them a little more interesting because it wasn't the same thing every time. And then I had a lot of trouble trying to get the right sound effect with this 8-bit kind of sound creator for a slime enemy. Because you picture a slime enemy having like a... some kind of squishy organic sound effect. But eventually I got something that was close enough because I want to get a game made, right? I don't want to spend forever getting the perfect sound effect or the perfect art. I want to have a game at some point. So then I moved on to the next enemy. And for this one, I used a quirk of the creature creator where if you move the body and the legs apart, they eventually separate. So I wanted to create something like a mechanical leg enemy with some kind of like floating menacing head or something on top. But then I ended up with this. And then I wanted to make this creature kind of a shield spawning enemy. It would make a shield that enemy bullets could pass through, but the player and their bullets couldn't. So I started by making a big rectangle. But that looked absolutely terrible when it was at any other angle other than a multiple of 45. And then, squirrel! I just for some reason decided it was time to change out the font. I had been playing a little bit of Forager, and the text in that game is really appealing. It's that like, chunky, blocky text with like a gradient on it. Hopefully I have footage to show you. So I went and found a bitmap font editor, grabbed a free to use font, plopped it in, and then added an outline to the image that was created. And now the font looks like this, which doesn't quite match the way the game looks, but at least now it's not blurry, and I really like how the damage number looks. Okay, back to enemies. So the shield enemy had a wonky shield, and on top of that, Z-ordering with something that big and long would have been kind of a nightmare. So I decided to make several objects to act as the shield, and they look like this. Again, using a blank capsule thing from Kenny's Creature Mixer. And I really like these because when you shoot them, they have like a little wobble. And I used a tween for when they spawn in and out, so they kind of look like they come up from the ground and then shrink away again. And then before I moved on to the next enemy, I had a look at the loot bag enemy, and that was no good. So back to the Creature Mixer. I made something that looked like this. Then I gave it a backpack with some yellow sticking out the top, which should tell you that it's points. And then I tried to give it this animation where it does like squats and prepares to jump away, but I had my angles mixed up. 
But then I got that working. And I stopped in the name of love to do some playtesting. I slotted the enemies into the rotation and looked around for some playtesters. And the only feedback that I got was that the imp, the big heavy enemy, was just kind of meh. So back to the creature mixer. And then I imported that into a sprite, broke it into its different animations, and moved the wings down as the character jumped up and made them stretch by just two pixels going down and then one when it landed. And I was really happy with that until somebody said something that I'm forgetting exactly what it was they said now. But basically I ended up taking out the frame as they fell. So they jumped up slowly and immediately slammed down, which after adding a little bit more to the shadow made for a really good impact. So then I put that into the game and changed the bullets to like a shockwave type thing. And now it looks like this. And now to really speed run making enemies. I'm going to make variations. So I'm going to take an existing enemy, change something about them, and then voila, two enemies. Starting with the ghost. This was very straightforward. Mario has its King Boo, so I have a royal ghost. I just threw a crown on their head, made them invulnerable until all the other ghosts are dead, and then when that happens, they double in size and fire more bullets. Kind of like a mini boss. Anyhow, the next one was one that I was calling the Imp Lord. And just because I think it's funny, the Imp Lord, when all of the other imps are dead, shrinks to half its size and then fires lots of bullets at you. So you've got to chase the little guy down. The loot bag enemy was the easiest one. I just copy pasted changed the color of the stuff in the backpack, and then changed a couple of variables around to make them drop health instead of money. Done. And then the next one gave me a lot of grief. <laughs> Mostly because I was trying to make new art, which is what I said I was not going to do. So this was going to be for a spider's nest. Basically the beehive's code, but swapped out for a spider. So the first thing I did, which I immediately regretted, was looked up spider nest online. Yep, that was, that was gross. But then I got this and that was kind of cute, but then there was more of the horrible stuff. And so I got to work first making this and then not liking it and making this and then not liking it and making this and then not liking it and making this. And eventually I threw my hands up and went, nope, Enough is enough. And now I've got this enemy. And then I stretched out the art a little bit to make it bigger and gave it a big circle behind it to act as its butt. And then like the satisfying thump when the beehive lands, I wanted to make the same thing for this enemy. So they raise up and do a little wiggle when they land, which is just the best. But also doing it this way, having it as a spider and not as a static thing like the beehive, it feels like a whole new enemy, and literally all that it does is try to get away from you if you're too close. And then the last variation was for the slime. I really wanted the slime to be a melee enemy, so I made a variation of the slime and just turned it red. And so when the slime jumps and lands, it creates a spray within a small spot now instead of taking over the entire map. But to compensate, it jumps a lot farther. So this one actually has a chance of landing on you. And I was considering making a wasp enemy, but I really want to move on to upgrades. So firstly, if you could just do me a favor and put in the comments an upgrade that you enjoyed from Binding of Isaac or Nuclear Throne or Revita, I guess, which I've been playing recently, that would be very appreciated. But for now, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, be sure to do the whole YouTube thing, and a huge thank you to my patrons. Because of them, my coffee cup is full, and I can even afford sugar. As always, the links to all the cool places that I hang out are down below, and if you decide to click on one, then I'll see you there.